Friends, as promised in studio, we have the wonderful, the talented, the smart, the freshly showered, the ready to go, Natalie Deutsch of Hatch Realty. Good morning, Nat. How are you? Good morning. I am good. How are you doing? I'm quite swell. Thank you much. Uh, great to have you in studio with us. And uh, people listening haven't had you on air for a while. And so I want to uh, try to walk through the life of Natalie uh, from birth until now, because you've had uh, your fingerprints all over this community for a long time time and you've done some really cool things yeah uh so birth um i guess okay we we only have like a 10 minute segment (laughs) well i mean (laughs) you opened it up i know i'm sorry (laughs) um well i was born and raised in fargo um, you're you're in north fargo Fargo, Fargo, right yeah don't worry i was gonna emphasize that sorry yeah Yeah. that matters for north fargo people it It certainly does yeah and so uh went to high school went to college over at moorhead and have been involved in the community um yeah since i was a little kid you know my parents put me in pretty much everything that they could and yep. uh oh, you, were, you were like a baton champion yes right? <laughs> yes i was miss springtime 95 <laughs> thank you very much i've got the trophy and the sash to prove it and the strut yes i don't know if you've strut. known that yeah. yeah yeah so um so other than baton twirling um was involved with a lot of student leadership and things like that throughout high school i've mm-hmm. uh, been involved with line benders for the last I don't know, 15 and years. And li- is li- Line Benders is improv comedy, right? Yes, yes, and, it and, is. And uh, some of our favorite stuff, of course, J.J. Gordon of KFGO right. uh, is the guru there. And J.J. and you are like uh, peas and carrots. Yes, yeah, yeah. I like to say, you know, maybe like potatoes and beets. Okay. You know, they <laughs> they go together in a really weird way, but yeah. they still work. So. Okay, I like it. Um, so, yeah, I've been involved with that. And then I was, I mean, I've bartended all over the place. Yeah. Uh, did a lot of different customer yep, service. Too, yeah. And... Uh, I've been with you at Hatch now for four and a half years. Wild ride. It has been. <laughs> it definitely has been. So, um, so yeah, being involved with the community, I love Fargo. I love, um, you know, I always thought I was going to move away, but I think that the older you get, the more you appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And we have one of the most unique, giving, amazing communities in the world. And so um, I just learned to love it even more mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Natalie, the last four and a half years, we've watched your business continue to grow. And, and folks, I'm going to give you at least a validator here is that the average realtor uh, in the country and in town sells about 10 houses a year. Natalie sold about 90 in 2018, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so you had just last year, nine years of experience, and you've had a pace like that ever crescendoing for the last few years. So you have you have been a masterful player in this market, and you know it better than almost anybody What's happening right now? Because uh, I think home sellers aren't as excited to sell their house as they once were. Nope, they definitely aren't. There are, you know, sellers who have a reason why they're listing at this time of year. There is totally the the scenarios of I don't want to move in the winter. You know, nobody's looking at houses, which, which. I actually think is completely incorrect because Mm -hmm. people are stuck inside. It's when they start noticing things about their house that they hate. We don't have enough storage for this. We don't have enough room for the kids to play. Mm -hmm. We don't have this. God, I cannot stand the color of our bathroom. We need to paint it. We need to change all these things. And, And then people are looking online. So they're hopping on to whatever website that they use to look at homes. You should go to hatchrealty.com to look at those. Oh, um, snap, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Nat- Natalie, believe it or not, January is the month that more people look at homes online than any other month of I the year. That. Right? It, it's, yep. it is uh, robust. And think of the last two blizzards we had over the last couple of weeks, right? Mm-hmm. People were stuck inside. And when you get tired of talking to your family, you start thinking, man, we could live in a better place where they're in a different room and they don't have to be with me, right? Yep. And that was a little dark, but uh, right. it's true though. Yeah. But you know, they monitor your screen time every week yeah. now, and my screen time went up significantly because we were stuck inside the house. Right. And I that's what I tell sellers all the time is it might not be that we're getting a ton of foot traffic through your house during January and February, but we are getting a ton of online line activity, and I think that that's so important. Mm-hmm. And that's why our marketing and our photography and videos that's so imperative for people to get their house you know seen the area Mm -hmm. grows by so many people every day and so if we can get people the best look inside of their home Mm -hmm. before they come to town if they've only got you know two hours to go and see 20 homes why not give them 
you know, a great virtual tour, a great video mm-hmm. of the inside of the house. So that that way they know what they're going for and what they're actually mm-hmm. looking at instead of getting to the house and being like, God, yeah, the kitchen seemed a whole lot bigger. I don't understand <laughs> what's yeah. going on. So um, I think that getting people that opportunity to have their house marketed correctly and right. and the right way is is so important this time of year. You know, I, I've always said that uh, most people, when they're going to look at houses now, are affirming what they already know rather than discovering what they didn't know. Uh, I started selling real estate in 2006, Nat. And, and as I did so, you would have like five pictures and they would be grainy JPEGs uh, that would be put on the house in the MLS, right? You would get one picture of the living room and uh, a shot of a dark kitchen that was poorly lit. And, and so you went to the house to discover, do I like this house? Nowadays, with the marketing, especially that we're doing and the photography, how many times do you think somebody's looking at a house before they actually go in and see it? Oh, I would say, I mean, our views, you can kind of count it how many times people are looking at it probably like 10 times before they Mm -hmm. even step in. Mm -hmm. in If somebody's going to leave their house, if they're going to schedule an appointment with an agent, if they're going to go out in the cold, they have exhausted that house already, haven't Mm -hmm. they? Yep. Uh, and, and then there's a race and we're moving into the race section again, and, and this is going to be really important. So folks, if you're thinking about listing your house right now, I wouldn't say that you're racing there. There's people who are seeing it. And when they do go and actually step foot, uh, there's a great chance that they are serious about your house, but come spring usually comes the race. What does that look like? Natalie? You know, the race is going to be who hits the market first. You know, last year we saw, the people who were extremely successful in selling their homes and getting the right price on their homes, they got on the market in May. Everybody who hits April, the market- April, May, June, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, there's an, a very strong line that you can see of anybody who hit in June that had the same house that somebody had that hit in May. That one was sitting on the market for a month. Because mm-hmm. although the summer seems like the hot time to purchase a home- a lot of people don't necessarily want to be out looking at houses in the summer. The springtime is the best time to hit the market. That's when you want to be the first one out, especially if there's multiple houses in your area. If you're living in an area with single family homes that are under that 250 mark and you're thinking about selling this year, you need to be on the ball and ready to go. And there's really no too early time to mm-hmm. list, I don't mm-hmm. believe, but there is too late if you're expecting like the multiple offer or yep. like some you know super uh, exciting uh, people fighting for your home. A seller's usually going to maximize their price and minimize their days on market if they choose that springtime listing, right? Yeah. The, the April or May. But that actually means that you don't start contacting your favorite realtor in April or May. No. You start contacting them in January and February to see what do I need to do? What's our marketing strategy? How do I maximize this, right? Right. Um Natalie, uh, I'm going to shift gears here just a moment because I think uh, there's an important looming fact out there because we, we we spent some time touting your success and, and folks that listen to Real Estate Radio Weekly get to hear about things that Hatch Realty is doing and, and, and it's been a really exciting time and exciting uh, run for us. But here's what matters more than anything, and I want you to to talk about this, is I asked a Facebook question uh, a a couple of weeks ago, and the question was this, is if you're looking to sell your home, what's the most important thing for you? A, is it that you're working with the most uh, well-represented, award-winning company? B, that you have somebody with a proven strategy to get you top dollar in the least amount of time? Or C, that you want to feel like you're that person's only client and you receive exceptional service. Okay, those were the three options that we gave. And I had about 70 responses from people. Nobody chose A. Nobody. Some people said A will happen when B and C are done right. But nobody chose A. About 20% of people chose B. That means that they want the most amount of money in the least amount of time. But 75 to 80% of people chose C. They want servicing. They want to be taken care of like they are our only client. And how in the world can you selling 90 homes in a year ever deliver on C? Having a team. I mean, I I understand customer service just from being in that industry for so long and understanding how making every single person feel like they're special and that mm-hmm. their needs are met mm-hmm. and they're not just a number. So that's important to me, but I cannot do it all by myself. And I know that. So having a team, um, you know, I've got a partner who, you know, she handles 
day-to-day communication as well as myself. And it's a constant check-in with our clients to make Mm -hmm. sure that they know that we're here for them, even if there's nothing going on. You know, there's some lulls in the process between, you know, going through an inspection to then appraisal and then from appraisal to closing. There's just time that we don't really have anything to tell them, but we still are checking in with them to let them know that, hey, we're still here, you know, and Mm -hmm. knowing about them personally too. So I... I 100% agree that it doesn't matter the awards, it doesn't matter any of those other things. It's it's having that personal relationship with your agent and knowing that they are there to take care of you. Uh, there's always this interesting dichotomy, I think, where uh, folks will think uh, I'm going to be best served by one person. That's how I get exceptional service. And you've chosen because there's paths in real estate, right? You can you can be a solo performer or you can work on a team, and you've chosen the team route in order to deliver on that service. Mm-hmm. How does that bring uh, a better level of service to your clients than than maybe the other options? Well, with being independent or, you know, just going at it on your own, there's, I mean, logistical things of saying, you know, you've got to pay for marketing. You've got to come up with all of those ideas yourself. You've got to, you know, pay out a freelance photographer. You've got to do video and things like that. Mm-hmm. And and while I can think to myself that I'd be great at that, um, I, there's just not enough hours in the day. And then you're also- Not, not if you want to have that fantastic relationship, right? Right, yeah. And, and your your job is relationship mm-hmm. and your job is you're a surgeon. When it comes time to navigate, negotiate, figure out price and help that client win, you are doing that 90 plus times a year, which means right. that uh, if, I have, if I have brain surgery that I need to have happen, Natalie, I don't want the person who does it 10 times a year. Right. I want the person that's done it 90 times that's going to cut me open. Right, I yeah. Got gruesome. I got dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I liked it. Um, but also just servicing clients and just being able to facilitate the entire transaction as one person, that's great if you can do it and you can do it successfully, more power to you. But mm-hmm. I also know that there is a huge a piece of that personal uh, factor that's just left out on the table because of the fact that you're working so hard for every piece of the transaction, whether it's paperwork, marketing, mm-hmm. uh, listing, getting everything up and and online. It's it's there's a lot of work that goes into it, and so if you've got a good team. I would rather be taken care of by a group of people that I know that nothing can fall through the cracks than one person who's putting all that pressure of, mm-hmm. of not only myself, but their 89 other listings. Right. It's just, it's not possible. So I think having a team is is why we've been so successful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that success doesn't come necessarily from the number of transactions. It comes from the way in which our clients feel about us. And, and that's that's why we do it in the first place. And mm-hmm. we're so fortunate. Uh, Natalie, you have uh, continued to grow and have exceptional uh, service that you've brought to our clients and to our team. Uh, I think 2019 is going to crush even what you've done previously. Uh, so excited and glad to have you in our family. Folks, if you want to list your house, if you want to find out what your home is worth, if you're interested in listing anytime this year, check Check out Natalie Deutsch. Uh, you can find her at hatchrealty.com. Uh, in this moment, we're going to go to break, but we'll see you in just a moment. This is Real Estate Radio with Eric Hatch.